last chance for the Marlins. 1-1. Hammer to right. Pache is over, and he makes the catch. And for the first time in 19 years, the Atlanta Braves have punched their ticket to the National League Championship Series. This past offseason, in both cases, the Marlins traded away a rather polished starting pitcher for a guy who was, at the time, a second baseman, basically. But they know how to develop these young studs, right? Has this team in there? We talk about the Braves and we talk about the Mets. We talk about the Phillies all the time. We never talk about the Marlins. They got young kids. Watch them. I got to be better at it. And this organization, you never know. Divisions are kind of getting depleted with injuries and you got shocked the world time, so we'll see what happens. The Miami Marlins are one of the most underrated teams in baseball right now. You kind of look at their record and realize they're 37 and 29, and no one's really talked about them at all this season. I mean, you look at the team right now as we're talking about it, they're 37 and 29, they're three and a half games out of leading their division to the Braves. They're already in a wild card spot. They have the same record as the Dodgers. And if you look at the wild card, they're almost tied for that first spot with the Dodgers, and they have a three-game lead over the Brewers. So the Marlins are looking really good right now, and no one is really talking about this team at all compared to other teams I've seen. I mean, this is one of the many surprises we've seen throughout the league. I mean, we've seen Arizona at 40 wins take the division from the Dodgers. They're playing really good baseball overall. I mean, you look at the Texas Rangers right now, once again, playing really good baseball, 41 wins, taking their division over Houston. So a lot of teams like this are kind of coming into form. I think the Marlins are one of those teams to kind of do it as well. I mean, the funny thing about this roster is they didn't make insane moves in the offseason. I mean, they, they obviously had a tragic season last year. They won 69 games, 93 losses, so not really the best season, you know, last year. They did make a couple moves in the offseason. I thought the Pablo Lopez trade for them was one of the better ones because you look at you you look at you know hitters. You always want the best hitters. You know that's kind of a thing. You can always get better pitching. In my opinion, you look at many World Series teams runs. They always have good hitting to start, and then they usually build pitching. Um, so that was the big thing. They sent Pablo Lopez to the Twins, and they gave up two of their prospects as well for Luis Arias, who is one of the best hitters. Um, you know, in, in the in the AL last year on the Twins, they get him this season. He's batting what I think 400 this season. He's got the most amount of hits in the league, most amount of hits in the team, and just putting you know just getting on base for them as their leadoff guy. And he's a second baseman, which I think is really key. He's the best second baseman I think in the league right now. He's hitting insanely well, and he's one of those guys that you kind of look to to get on base for the squad. And the fact that he's a second baseman makes him even better because usually second baseman, you know, they're really not the best. At hitting you know if you look at a lot of teams around the league they're usually not the best at hitting compared to positions that we've seen in the past so that's a huge factor i think for them and you know like i said their pitching has been a lot better this season i mean you kind of look at this pitching staff with sandy alcantara coming off that cy young season last year He's obviously, he struggled at the start, and now he's getting in form again. Obviously, Edward Cabrera, you know, he, he's been he's been doing really well for this Marlins squad as well. So I think you look at him as one of their young prospects, kind of like a kind of like a Lopez again, putting in form. But they absolutely win that trade, in my opinion, just based off this season alone. I think they win that trade. We'll see what those prospects develop for the Twins eventually into the future. But they make some smaller trades here or there going into this season and I don't think a lot of people expected much from this squad um, you know so that, that's, that's a major thing to look into you know they obviously start the season against the Mets you know don't really perform the well kind of go down in that series they don't really win that they go against the Twins they win that one they would take two wins right there off the board they lose to the Mets again they win the Phillies series win the D-back series which I think is a big series for them um, just because the Diamondbacks you know were playing the Dodgers the Padres and then the Dodgers again and then they play this Miami squad so interesting over there they beat the Giants in that series which I think is the key for this team if they can win these consistent series then they're just going to be a good team which I think is their main thing right now then they win the doubleheader against Cleveland in April they lose the Braves series 3-1 so not the best they sweep the Cubs at the end of April so able to get a decent amount of wins on the board already and then they start out made pretty bad they have five losses in a row not something you want to see you know so and then the next week they do better they beat the d-backs you know able to pick up two wins lose the red series which isn't ideal sweep the nationals which i think was you know definitely a positive because those are the teams you've got to be especially in your division then the next week they play they play pretty bad against the giants and the rockies 
They were able to sweep the Angels series once again, which is another dub. And then we go into June, and this team's playing a lot better, um, which is something that I think the whole league has noticed at this point. Um, you know, they, they take one from the Padres, they sweep the A's, they sweep, uh, you know, the Royals, and they win two of one from the White Sox. So this month so far, they've been playing incredible baseball, which has propelled them to this, you know, wild card second spot in their division right now. That's the main reason they're playing so well right now. You know, because these are the teams you got to beat. You look at the A's, the, the Royals, the White Sox, teams you got to beat. And we'll see how they keep going. They have an interesting schedule coming up. They play the Mariners this week, which I think will be a good match for them. Then they play the Nationals. So teams I think they should beat across the board, um, you know, and, and be able to get some big wins and be able to put themselves in a position to compete. So I definitely think this team's going to buy at the trade deadline. It's just an interesting franchise to look at. You know, going from, you know, a couple teams where I thought they could have had, you know, a a couple playoff runs you look at 2017 i think for example and what you know with that team with christian yelich john carlos stan i think ozunia in the outfield as well as one of the most stacked outfields i think that season you look at a team like that then they kind of go in this rebuilding phase now they're kind of back into this spotlight um you know with the whole jeter saga and everything like that going on so you know i think this team's just found a way to win and that's kind of their the, the you know their thing right now we'll see how this team keeps going into in into the you know, the rest of june and obviously into the all-star break and, we'll, and we're gonna see where they are at that point um you know they're, they're gonna have some good teams coming up in july you know so it's gonna be tough for them they play literally the top teams they play the braves they play the cardinals again they play the phillies they play the orioles they play the cardinals again colorado and detroit which are two series they gotta win they play the rays for two so it will be an interesting july for them but i think this team's definitely gonna buy i think they got a good shot to make the playoffs this season with the way they're already playing I mean, the, the, the team's just very consistent. I mean, I've talked about it again, but you look at guys like Luis Reyes, who's been playing good. Obviously, you got Jorge Soler, which I think is one of their biggest pickups, you know, across the board. Obviously, it's smart to get him. You know, he just won the World Series with the Braves and playing really well his whole career. That's his second ring, you know, trying to get his third. You look at a guy like that who's really good as well. Still got Sandy Alcantara, who's been performing well. Got Cabrera as well as more pitching depth. And then you even look to, like, some guys like Tanner Scott's been pitching really well out of the bullpen. For this team so got a lot of pitchers like that that are just performing really well and then you look to the rest of the lineup i mean you know this, this team's not terrible they end up picking gene segura from you know obviously the phillies last year had a great run with that squad you know a, you know they're, they're still trying to get some more done over there obviously you have other guys like joey wendells i think he's a decent player same with garrett hampson i think i think he's a good player as well garrett cooper another good player john birdie i think's underrated and then they obviously have yuri guriel from you know the astros so it's interesting, their catcher is probably the weakest spot, at least in the hitting aspect. I think they're both really good defensive catchers, Jacob Stallings and Nick Foltes. You know, I think they're good defensive catchers, but I don't think they're that good um, you know, for hitters. And you look at the outfield, obviously, they got De La Cruz out there, who's been performing pretty well. Obviously, Brian De La Cruz, not the one of the Reds, so you guys don't get confused. Um, but performing really well. And honestly, I think this team's kind of underrated with some of the names they have. Obviously, Soler is pretty big. Obviously, Jazz Chisholm is injured, and they're doing this without him. So I think that says a lot as well. I haven't even talked about Jazz Chisholm and what he did for this team last year. That's another key name. I think that's out of their lineup that they're performing really well with. So it's going to be interesting to see how this team goes for the rest of the season. I think they definitely buy at the deadline. We're, we're going to see who they pick up or if they sell or who even knows what they're going to do. They definitely should buy, though, and try to improve something in their roster you know maybe you get some more pitching depth maybe you add another infielder another outfielder you know because jazz is hurt right now i think that'd be some key pickups for the squad right now to actually be able to make a run and yeah i think a lot of people have some high hopes for this squad uh you know we'll see how good they actually do i don't i see i see them getting a fifth or sixth spot in the playoffs um just overall you know, I think if they're able to keep up this consistency, I think they'll be in that range. Then we'll see if they end up playing in the playoffs, which they haven't done since 2020 with that expanded format. So we'll see if they're able to get in this time, and we'll see how the rest of this Marlins team goes. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see the Marlins make the playoffs, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everyone.